Good morning. Welcome to Hashem Torah Anytime. We're up to Perik Lamed, where Sheyo Anovi continues, and he says both both the both the end of time, how it's going to look like, as well as the Geula revelation. A lot of amazing phrases come from here, from this Perik. Hoi bonum soyrim no mashem. Oi oi, we were children. Last is Eitzah v'loy mini. You're looking for you're looking for solutions. V'loy mini, not for me. V'lintzech masecha. V'loy ruchi. You're looking to cast an image, but v'loy ruchi, not for my spirit. Looking for solutions, you're looking for spirit, you're looking for spirituality, not from me. Laman is chatos al chatos, in order that you can add sin upon sin. Which is usually the end of when you're stuck on an issue and you don't look inward for the solution, so you end up finding more sins. It's like, it's like you have a problem, so you're going to take... A, you're going to find uh, painkillers, let's say, to numb the pain, and then you get addicted to the painkillers. That's the man's choice, chatos al chatos. You started off with a chatos, and because you're running away from the issue, now you increase the chatos al chatos. <coughs> now, the Eden were, at that point, there were two superpowers. You had Egypt and you had Assyria next to Malchi Yisrael, Malchi Yehuda. So instead of feeling the stuckness and uh, going inward or upwards to Hashem, they tried to kiss up to the superpowers next to them and believe that that's going to solve their issues, which in reality never works because it's Laman Svayz Chatos Achatos. So it's Ahorchem Leredes Mitzrayim, those that go down to Mitzrayim in order to play politics there. But they didn't ask me or it means Ufila Shaolu means they didn't ask me what's my intention, what's the reason why they're going through this difficulty. Lo is bemo is paroi in order to seek strength from the strength of paroi. Balach says betel mitzrayim in order to find shelter under the protection of mitzrayim. Vahelchem mo is paroi the voices. You know it's going to be the end of the strength you got from paroi. It's going to end up bringing you shame. Vehachosos betel mitzrayim lechlima. And the shelter that you took from Mitzrayim is going to end up bringing you to humiliation, which is the end, historically, of all the times the Jewish people try to kiss up to the, to the nations around them. They try to assimilate. It ends up, they get spit out. Which is interesting that this was already prophesied 3,000 years ago, and it still continues on until today, that we think... We're in a problem, so we kiss up to the nations around us, and then we find out that they actually offer no protection at all. Because Soyan and Chones, these were two strongholds of Egypt. So when they got the Soyan, they got the Chones, Kol Hoivish Al Am All of the princes who uh, All of ki kol kol hoivish al am lo yo ilu lamoi lo le ezer ve lo le hoil ki le voishes ve gam lecherpo. All those that came and everything that they did from the Malchi Yehuda caused shame and it's a stink tune. Hoivish it means it's a stink tune. It smells. It's rotten. It's not lo le ezer lo le hoil ki le voishes ve gam lecherpo. It ends up bringing shame and disgrace. And then Maso Bahamo is Nega Beeret Sorov Tuko Lovi Velayish Mehem Efe Vesorov Moifev Yisu Al Kesef Oidem Chaleya Val Dabeshes Gemalim Oitroiso Mal Am Loyayilu. So it seems like a metaphor of uh, expedition of animals. And then there's all these different types of problems that come on. There's a roaring lion and a lion cow and these snakes. And uh, they put all the riches on, on, on donkeys. <clears throat> and on camels, but it doesn't work because everything they do to try to chanfa and to appease the Egyptians ends up lo yoyilu. Umitzrayim hevel varik yazoyilu lochin kerosil zoy se rahav heim shoves. So Egypt doesn't help you with anything, and I call it 
um, gaiva, arrogant. It's not. A, it's it's it doesn't have any effect. Rahav heim shoves. So Rahav and and their uh, Rahav and Shabbos, they they write as like these two little sea animals. That you think that there's this huge monster in the end, it's only that's the biggest pain is when you find out that the nations that brought you down, all they were were little nothings, little sea animals. They had actually you created the fear in your own mind. So it's like a, it's like a double scam. You pumped up certain nations or powers as if they have something to help you. And then, then you find out after they bring you down that it was nothing. It was like uh, Lahavdul, one Nazi, uh, you know, chased down a thousand, a thousand, uh, a thousand Eden. And now the Navi says, I have something very important. Come, let's write down something. Write down on a tablet and engrave it or inscribe it on a scroll and it should remain inscribed forever the messages because it's a defiant people defiant children children who don't want to hear the word of Hashem that means you want to hear everything besides what Hashem has to say we'll go to any anywhere any spiritual practice any type of uh, political alliance, any type of uh, woke um, way of uh, looking at the world, woke perspectives, just not to hear what Hashem has to tell us. I said, Amru Leroyim, Loisiru. The people tell the seers, they tell the Nevi'im, Loisiru, Velachoizum, Loisech Zulonu, Mechoichoiz, Dabru Lonu, Chalokoiz, Chazu, Mahasaloiz. It's like, we tell the Nevi'im, we tell the Gadol Yisrael, we tell the people who have uh, insights for us, and we tell them, don't prophesize for us. All we need for you is to create an illusion that life is good. We, 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 like, we hire or we appoint leaders or seers who are here to be feel good, peace and love, that are going to tell us that everything is fine and they're not going to hold us accountable. Suru mini derech. And basically what we're saying is, we're saying just get God out of here. Just get Hashem out of here. Get Him out of our lives. Therefore, Hashem says, because... You despise, but David Azev, Atiftachu, but Oishek, Venolos, Vitishanu, all of. You relied on exploitation, you relied on corruption. Lochen, Yer Lochem, Oven Azek, Peretz, Neufel, Nive, Bechoimon, is Gova, Shepis on the Pesa, Yova Shivro. It's going to be like a breach in a wall that suddenly falls down, the whole wall falls down. Ushvaro, Keshev, Nevel, Yoitzim, Kosos. It's going to break like a potter's jug. Lo Yachmov, Limote, Bim Kitoso, Cheresh. It's going to get so shattered that you're not even going to be able to use a shard of it to rake coals or to take water out. It's not even going to be a shard that's small enough to do anything. That's how fragmented you're going to become. So Hashem says, Ah, uh, you know what's going to save you? B'shuva. When you're going to V'nachas Tivashayim, with silence, with quietness, with pleasantness. But you're unwilling to accept that path. V'loy avisem means you didn't want it. V'toimru, and you're going to say, no, we're going to flee on a horse. We're going to use vehicles. We're going to use speed in order to run away from our issues. We're not ready to sit still and to listen to the inner voice of God. Okay, in Tanusun. We're going to go on something that's very light. Okay. Therefore, your enemies are going to be even quicker than you. If you think you're going to run away from your problems with speed, you should know your issues will gather more speed than you. Wherever you run, your issues run away. Whenever you have a problem in your life, 
pain, a problem, and you try to escape from it and try to resolve it from external methods, the problem turns into hell. That's how you create hell, by running away and trying to resolve it from the outside of you. Whenever you sit still and you sit in the issue and you communicate with it and you hear what it has to tell you, what Hashem is telling you from within, then with the Alte Gan Eden, Ver the Nai Gehenem. When the Alte Gehenem, Ver the Nai Gan Eden. That means the old Gehenem turns into the new Gan Eden. When you sit still, like the Pasuk said, Beshuva of Anachas Tivashayun. Elef Echod, Minegayas Echod. This is one of the painful prophecies of how one, one enemy or one Nazi is going to be able to uh, make a thousand people flee. Negaras Chamisha Tenusu Ad Im Nesartem Kasoyden Al Rosh Hashanah V'Chanes I'll give him from five. You're going to stand like a pole on top of a mountain, vulnerable and unprotected. Even though it was only only in your mind, and it was only because you had this um, self survival um, tendency. And one of the most painful things that that I read was that Gandhi. Um, I don't know if it was before the war or after the war, during the war, he taunted that if the Jews would have just sat still, meaning they just would not have complied, then nothing would have been able to... I mean, how many Jews could they have killed if everybody would have just sat still and disobeyed orders? How many people could you kill one by one? It's only because they had this uh, entire systemized most of the most of the most of the Holocaust happened from mental manipulation, from fear and from just trying whatever. That's is what the Psukum are describing. When you're aligned within yourself, when you just sit still in one place, you end up way better off than when you start fleeing and running, because fleeing and running just is Mam Shekh more fleeing and running. Even till today we're still fleeing and running. Even today, in times of peace, you know, the children and the, the Einiklech, we're still fleeing and running. We, the ticking is we have to go back to what the Yeshayo Anovi says, and he tells you, Beshuva, Kikhoya Maravaya, Likim Kedosh Yisrael, Beshuva, Venachas Tivasheyo, Bahashkeitu, Vivitchot Yegvuraschem, Veloya Visem, Skaval Posik, Vilchen Yachak Hashem, Lechananchem, Vilchen Yodam, Lechemchem, Kelekem, Mishpat Hashem, Ashrei Kol, Choy Cheloi. Therefore, Hashem is waiting, and Hashem is going to wait to uh, have Rechmonus on you, to be gracious to you. Ashrei kol choy cheloi. Gavaldu words. Happy are all those who wait for Him, or kol choy cheloi, those that sit still for Him. But that's something that's still now. Ashrei is somebody who, when he has an issue, he sits still in it, without trying to resolve it from external... You have a person that will do a shtadus, and the person has to do the normal gosh music ways to resolve things but within yourself the name of the game is to sit still and to listen and to somehow their head what the Gehenim is trying to teach you until it transforms into a Ganeidin Ki am b'tzion yoishev Yerushalayim because the nation that's sitting in Yerushalayim b'choy lo yisivke he will weep no more chono nyichoncho l'koil za'akecho it's good psukim to read today in Shavas HaBetamas He's going to show chinun, mercy, to the cries. Kisham also onoch. Kisham also onoch. He's going to hear you and he's going to answer you. That means gradually there's going to come salvation, and you know what's going to what it's going to look like. He's going to give you a little bread and a little water. So poshut means that even when times are not going to be that good. But still, you can't oid my recha, but you can't oid my recha, but you can But can also mean that we're going to start living in a world where even lechem tzad and maim lochatz is going to be enough. Because we're not going to be looking, lo yidav, lo lechem, lo yitzam ala maim. It's the same concept of the famous prophecy that people won't be hungry for bread and they won't be thirsting for water. Not because there won't be enough, just because they won't have an interest in it. They'll be more interested. And here's the very, all of the, all of the signs that we have in Asuka and all of the posters of Olga Dailam comes from this passage. But when you understand the context, it means 
that when you're going to stop running away and you're going to sit still and you're going to be here to listen, <clears throat> you're not going to be interested in what bread, you're not going to be thirsting for water, even the little that you have will be enough. Your teacher won't be hiding themselves behind their cloak. Either it means a physical teacher or it means Hashem. But regardless, there's not going to be this mazve, this mask. And your eyes are going to see your teacher. So it goes, it connects to what we were saying before, that when you're going to be listening and tuned in, you're going to see your teacher. Or it means that when you sit still and you listen to the divine voice or connection that you have within you, then your eyes see your own teacher. Your eyes get to see your own inner moira. Everybody has an inner teacher within them. That everything you need to know, you know already. Everything you need to know in order to solve your issues, you have the solutions within yourself. But you're not getting to meet it because you're busy running away from it. But when you're going to be still, like the Novi said, then your eyes get to see your inner teacher and you have the inner solutions within you and that's when you start going into a place of geula and you're going to be able to hear things that are behind you that were things that you didn't notice that were there you know what your inner is going to tell you it's going to tell you things that you looked away from because it was behind you and it's going to say say this is the path you should go on. When you should go right and when you should go left. And suddenly you're going to have clarity when you have to do what. Sometimes you have to go left, but you need to know when. The name of the game is to know when to go right and when to go left. The name of the game is not always to go right and the name of the game is not always to go left. But usually all the things you wanted to know is buried into the Eigen oven. It's buried under your own oven. It's buried under within, it's in plain sight, but you just don't see it. And that's called the things which are dovor me'acharecha, things which are like right behind you. V'timesem, and you know what's going to be, the result is going to be, v'timesem as tzipoi psilei kaspecha, and you're going to be metamo, that's which is covered in silver, but really kaspecha also means money, so it means that v'timesem as tzipoi psilei kaspecha means that, uh, you know, in God we trust on the dollar bills are going to suddenly God is going to move over from the dollars into your heart. You're going to be metama. You're going to defile. All of your idols are just covered with money. And all of the, you know, all of the idols that's covered with gold, you're going to throw them out like something that's unpure or unclean. And you're going to say, You're going to say like, let me hope with the gelt. Let me hope with the shiny. Let me let me let me hope with the shiny, <coughs> with the shiny toys. <coughs> I don't need good money. I don't need shiny toys. All I need is to listen to the inner voice, to the God communicating within me. People are going to be disgusted from the things. Things is one of the ways how we turn our ganeden into gehenna. It's also one of the ways that we run away from ourselves is that we get things which give us small bursts of uh, dopamine pleasure and the issue is still there. It's another way how we try to get um, a bunch of instant pleasures. We try to fill up our days with many instant pleasures because as soon as you have it, it's uh, something which is outside of you. It's sweet the moment you get it, but once you have it already, it loses its sweetness, so you're out for the next Mayim Genuvim, you're out for the next forbidden thing to get that instant pleasure. So we spend our lives running after one forbidden pleasure after another to fill ourselves up with pleasure, all the while when our soul is crying for a little sheket, a little, a little inner, inner peace and serenity, a little connection, a little... Our Moira is crying to teach us something, we don't want to listen. And then I'm going to give rain for your seeds, or if you want to go metaphorically, your children. On that day, the earth is going to be fat, the lambs are going to be fat, everything is going. To, the second you don't need it, that's when it actually gives you sustenance. That's the scam of the world. The scam of the world is. That for one, for one that's not interested in trying to find shiny things, 
and the things in his in his life, you know, this, this, these people, these minimalists. You ever uh, you ever meet up with these minimalists, and they get like intense pleasure from. They have like one jacket, or they have like like these little, the tiny homes. You ever saw these these tiny homes where these people cut it? And the biggest irony is a lot of these minimalists are people who make a lot of money, who made a lot of money, and they had huge humongous houses. And then one day they woke up and they said, like, why in the world am I a slave to all of the things and uh, space? <laughs> why am I doing this? Why am I working to take care of so many idols, so many things? So they get rid of all the things and suddenly they have one chair and they have one space and they, and they just start living. It gives them sustenance. It gives them chayas. That's by Yoyim Ahu Kad Nilchav. The lamb is going to be fat. When you're not going to need it, that's when it's going to be fat. That's the irony of the, the contrast to the world. And all of the livestock which work the earth, the oxen and donkeys, they're going to have the richest feed in the world. The choicest feed that was winnowed and all the shaft is out. And that day, there's going to be like mountains where you have um, dead people strewn and broken down uh, um, fortresses. It's a sign of death. But right beyond that death, there's going to be clear streams of water running down the hills. So that's like a vision of that from the destruction is going to grow, will sprout new hope, new salvation. This is all kol ar gevoyo, all kol given the soap, plog emiv leimayim, streams of water. Oyo oyo al von kerachama, the most famous of all psukim, that the light of the moon is going to be like the light of the sun. And this is very. Uh, this is where everybody knows the Maim Chazal that the moon wanted to be like the sun, and it says v'chi mav ein shnei melachim l'shtam shem bekesel echad, and it says v'chi. And then when Mashiach comes, it's going to... The Eira Chama, the Eira Levana means... The Eira Levana is what gets a reflection. We have a sun, and the sun shines down, and the moon gets a reflection. So usually we view in our world, in the Golis world, we look at the sun, he's the light, but the reflector is just the offshoot. But when Mashiach is going to come, we're going to realize the tremendous power that the reflectors had, that the moon had, that the Makablam had. But you know it's going to be with the sun. Yeshivasayim sevenfold. So the mafarshim go that it ends up like well, well, 390, 343 times. This is called It means the greatest light that ever it was, the most powerful of all lights. This is where the phrase comes from. On the day which God, where God is going to heal the wounds and uh, mend the bandage the brokenness of the people. And now it goes back to the to the depiction of how Hashem's wrath is burning. And his lips are full of anger. His breath is like a surging stream that reaches until the neck. There's going to be like, a, there's like a rain that's leading the people. That means it's like this hidden rain, this invisible rain that leads them astray. This song is going to be for you, Kalel Eskadesh Chog, V'simchas Leibov, like the night of a festival. V'simchas Leibov, K'hoilach B'cholel, Lovoi Bar Hashem, Al Tzur Yisrael. It's going to be like somebody playing a flute, dancing his way, skipping and dancing up on the holy mountain. V'yishmi Hashem, as hoit koile v'nachaz iloya, yale b'zaf, af, v'lav, eish uichlo nefetz, v'zerem v'evem barot. And alongside those, you know, the, the joy of going with your flute, up until the Beis Hamikdash, so too is going to display his arm coming down and like a flame coming down, like 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 a storm, like hailstones. Again, it's a depiction of a side by side depiction of those that are going to be in a place of bliss versus those that are going to be in a place of destruction. <laughs> because of the because. The voice of Hashem, Yechas Ashur, 
b'shevet yake. Assyria is going to be broken with a rod. And it's going to be that all those that are going to be like traveling along this passage, they're going to have the war drums and, and, and again, it's a description of terror. Those are the drums. And with uh, like drum roll. Ki Aruch may esmol tofta because from yesterday there was prepared already uh, like a fire or a conflagration. Ki Aruch may esmol tofta gam hula melech uchon that was also prepared for the king. Hamik he deepened it. Hirchiv mudurasa he spread out the madura as the flame or the fire. Esh ve'etzim harba much fire and wood. Nishmas Hashem kenach agafres. The breath and spirit of Hashem is going to be like a stream of gophrus, like sulfur, which burns in it. And that's the end of Pedic Lamed, where we learned that everything within is your Ganeden, and everything without is not.